as an empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless. Hello? Level three. <laughs> Greetings and welcome to The One Within All. You're listening to Interverse. My name is Chance, and this is Season 3, Episode 22, with the return of my excellent friend Marina Carey, who, well, these days she's into a lot of stuff, so it's hard to describe her as any one thing, but she is a life painter. She is a festy merchandise vending master. She is... A promoter for Vaz Dope Records, which has some of the sickest anything around in terms of musical creations. And uh, yeah, she's also uh, got her spiritual head on her shoulders and her physical feet on the ground. And it's just a really good person to talk to for reinvigorating the creative passion that you might sometimes find yourself struggling to maintain because of the way that real life tends to throw total WTF stuff into your path that you really could never have expected that even though you might have thought that you were really grounded and centered um, can derail you at least for a little while. And, you know, I'm speaking from personal recent experience that I won't go into too far other than to say there's, you know, sometimes personal tragedies in families that, are completely unpredictable and out of the blue. And um, so, you know, that's why the podcast hasn't been here for a solid two weeks, which I'm very sorry for, guys. And, uh, you know, that's not going to happen again anytime soon, I can promise. Uh, I've got a lot of awesome guests lined up for November. So don't worry. There will be a weekly show for sure. Maybe even some extra ones in there. And thanks for your patience. And thanks for your understanding. And I hope that you get a lot out of my talk with Marina right here because I had a lot of fun. It's always good to catch up with her. And I highly recommend you maybe even go check out previous episodes we did together if you like our talk here because we always just kind of pick up where we left off. And it's cool to see how even though we have different paths, we can still recognize the collective consciousness changing as we are learning and integrating similar lessons from our unique situations. And that goes for any friend that you haven't talked to for a long time. You can kind of recognize that. And that's a cool synchronicity whenever that occurs. And this conversation is like that. So um, enjoy. And don't forget, you can find all the links to the many things Marina is involved with from her various online stores where she sells cool art and hat pins and metaphysical tools on wanderwareshop.com or uh, That's Dope Records. Uh, All that's going to be linked there, and you can also find the Patreon for Interverse where you can click the link and go pledge a a minimum of a dollar a month, and you will be able to access some bonus content, including the daily artwork that I post there. And if you are a current subscriber, why not go check out the Patreon page and see what I've been putting up there? I've really been making an effort to get my creative juices flowing every day and put something out there for you guys. and um yeah maybe it'll tickle your fancy so yeah you can check that out patreon.com forward slash interverse and enjoy this episode the uh, music is also going to be linked in the show notes so don't forget to check that out if you enjoy what you hear especially this mount analog song i'm about to play before the interview thanks for listening i love you guys stay tuned for a lot of fun stuff in november for the podcast and um, don't forget, you can always reach out, contact me through social media. Let me know if you have a good person to bring on the show, or maybe even if you want to come on the show. I'm definitely there for you, so let's talk. Okay, again, much love, and I'll see you on the other side. Glaze for days, feeling amazed at this mess. Feeling the stress compressed, it's putting my life to the test, and I'm feeling that I should be a tad depressed. Nah. 
Infected with thoughts, but this life is the one that will cost. But I am my boss, so I broke a lot. Money is fickle, I joke a lot. Poetry saves me daily. Buried in art and I wouldn't have it any other way. Wait that I feel and I'm proud of it. Screaming a lot and you know that I'm loud with it. Woo -hoo -hoo. Emaciated ego. Fly like an eagle. Pierced with the needle. Blood money quick. Can I get a rebate? Doesn't hurt to ask. It can't run organs on cash. Initiate rhymes and I'm making my time flow freely. Ideally, this idea is seemingly seamless. Can I complete this? Hopefully. Breaking the bow when I'm dropping the child. Shooting the bow, Pinocchio will smile. Vague mystic references don't make me a philosopher. Quarks, electron, proton, neutron, photon. Are we the light from the sun? Are we the sons of the one? Are we the ones with the guns? The strings are pulling the funds. Dark matter matters matter-of-factly. Ask me exactly what my abstractly abstract wordplay means. Woke up and realized my time was missing. Fix science will turn the crucifix. Dying is on my bucket list. Listen closely, I'm mostly a ghost and dropping ionized guts. Disguise the cries from the cuts. Compression bending my struts. Sometimes there's objects in my peripheral. Manifestations of failures and all that shit's ephemeral. You're running against accomplishments. The art is sacrificed. Don't be content. Complacency is certainly a vacancy. Let's fill the void. Darkness light destroyed don't go gentle into that good night if you want to flex the faults of four corners crippling the darkness freely with light this is the time shattered dimensions we climb hopefully someday sublime if you gotta run the circuits we're bending silicone power is making you blind the raw wild ones fight the darkness blazing like meteors eruptions and implosions a simultaneous endless flux rage against the dying of the light Okay, everybody, give a warm welcome for the return of Wanderware's very own creator and resident artist and shopkeeper, Marina Carey. What's up, Marina? Long time no talk to. Hey, everybody. Good to talk to you, too. I'm excited about today. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, why don't you just start by like giving me a little bit of a catch up on what what it's been like uh, over this summer's festi season or like what kind of art you've been working on what's new in your life what what's good you know yeah what's what's the deal uh this year it looked very different than my past summers i was blessed with the opportunity to go on tour with a production company uh, that's dope records out of cincinnati ohio invited me to be their uh merchandise manager as well as live painter. I got to travel literally from coast to coast uh, over the course of three weeks on the uh, Wake the Nation tour featuring, it was, I want to say like 22 artists that traveled with us all, you know, making their own production of bass music, traveling in vans, caravanning across the country, being in a different tour stop every single day, some days traveling nine hours. It was amazing i believe they call that living the dream <laughs> you know it is living the dream and it taught me a lot man living on the road is is so cool and fun and it makes you really resourceful and really focused i think as an artist it made me really hone in like uh how i use my time because on the road you're on the road a lot of the time you don't have time really it really matters how you use it Man, I could but, uh, I could so, use something like that. Getting out of the daily routine and having something, doing something different every day, like not having the same pattern to follow every day. I think that would be really helpful. Actually, um, I get a little stuck in the the routine, if you will, and find myself thinking, "Oh, well, I have time, so I I'll just uh, waste a lot of it." <laughs> yeah, it's. It was really cool being on the road too, because like you said, with the schedule, I'm a very planner, organized kind of person. So being on the road really broke me of that for a while and made me go with the flow and being with you know, 30 other people on the road, you're all on each other's time and you all have to communicate and work things out on how, where you're going to eat, where you're going to stop, who needs to go to the bathroom, you know, do you guys want to see this cool museum or this beach randomly because we're in this state, you know, and it was really just a practice in 
letting go and letting what happened is supposed to happen and just enjoying and having no expectations, but then having the most amazing experiences because of allowing that release of like control energy almost. Well, that, that sounds like um, kind of like what I've been intellectually thinking about a lot, which is that freedom and control don't really go hand in hand. And um, we have so much fear of the potential of the unknown or any form of chaos that a lot of us tend to be very controlling of our lives and create those routines and those patterns. And it's, uh, you know, your unconscious mind can just run your entire life and you can realize that, wow, I'm only even sort of awakened here in the present moment, maybe five or 10% of my day. And the rest of the time it's like autopilot. So um, it's, yeah. it's really cool that you're, that your dedication to your art and to making something of, uh, you know, what your creations can bring to the world and getting them out there and hustling, you know, just plain hustling has led you to this amazing new opportunity. If people listening haven't checked out previous episodes with you, I think that they would get a lot out of listening to our previous conversations because really one of the reasons I even make this show is to sort of demonstrate to everybody that people like you, Marina, are both special and wonderful and unique and brilliant and talented, but also just like the rest of us. And, you know, you had, you just started one step at a time, one little drawing and one little doodle exactly. at a time. I'm just like anybody else. I just, I feel like I figured out the secret where you put your energy. You know, you, you continue to ruthlessly decide to, follow your truth and your passion and what makes you, you and being a hundred percent you and, and going for that and not being afraid, you know, and living in love and not fear and, and just breaking down those insecurities. You know, if you keep putting the energy there, it keeps coming back to you. You know, since I've decided to follow my creative passions, the universe has given me whatever it is that I need for me to become a better me. And, and to be happier and do more of the things that I want to do. You know, I, I, this year, you know, I've always loved creating. And when I did Wanderwear, I did a lot of making. So it was making functional art, things that people would want to buy. And I've really gotten to transform this year and make more things that I want to make and have people respond and still want to buy them and feel what I'm, what I'm making, you know, where I'm taking my art. And it's really cool. I didn't have to, vend as much this year uh and carry boxes you know of incense and sage which i still had that but i didn't have as much of a standalone booth like that i got to be on stage next to you know yeti and toadface and spankalicious and deerskin and all these artists that i look up to myself creating right next to them and it was just a different experience and a whole nother level of validation for my creativity to have people go see me you know, change and, and do what I want to do, even within the festival world, not even just, you know, civilian world. <laughs> One thing too, uh, about that production company that you were running around with, and the, even the name of the tour is That's very, records. it's very telling the name of the wake tour the being, nation. yeah, wake the nation. I, I saw, um, Yeti and Toadface and Mount Analog, uh, guys from That's Dope all over the damn country this year and a lot of places that I went. Mount Analog is amazing. Oh Traveling my. with him is just like a ray of light. What he has to say, he is like lyrical shaman master. Will you give me a touch and put him on show. Universe? Uh, most definitely. I think he'd love that. He would <laughs> okay. love that. He's I mean, he clearly had, this show. He has a way with words. You can words. listen to his lyrics. Yes. Oh, I do. <laughs> oh, I have. a calm, centered way about him too. It's just his perspective is awesome. He really should be on the show. I'll definitely try to do that. Uh, I'm going to snag a Mount Analog track for like intro music or something now for this episode. Definitely. Yes, People need to hear that's because perfect. His, uh, he, he's, he's just like blasting forth this lyrical um, sort of like wake up juice, I guess. <laughs> it's like you're, you're alive. You're here. Like it's, it's very, I'm, it's 11-11 right now also, which is cool. We're talking, it's very 11-11. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Make a wish. 
Yeah. I mean, his music is very spiritual, though. Um, and Yeti, too. And all of those, that crowd, what I was trying to get at is, like, that's just a very, like, spiritually minded, but also creative and fun for and weird and novel for the sake of it. Like, all those all those uh, acts, they seem to have a sort of common shared spirit. And it's really, really cool to watch that type of creative vibe get circulated around the nation and so well received. I mean, Yeti, especially, he's it just was so awesome. blowing people's minds this year. Yeah. And what that tour took me to was I got to travel and then I ended up being able to live paint at a pop-up stage at summer camp this year. And I'd never been to summer camp before. So I was blessed with that opportunity. And that was amazing. And uh, then, which that took us to the Uns Festival, which I saw you there, you and Haley. Yeah, over in California, that was awesome. not exactly a small right? distance away. I know it was super crazy because I'm born and raised in California, not northern, southern, and so returning to my home state for the first time in years, doing the thing that I love, was just like again a blessing. Like I just feel like this whole summer has been huge showers of blessings for me that's why i just want to encourage people to do what you love and chase what you love because it's so worth it my heart is so full on such a regular basis that even on my downest days i just need to sit and just i'll go through my snapchat uh camera roll you know or memories and just look at all the things i've done this summer and just remember the gratitude and remember the blessings and just be like okay this is what i have to come if i continue doing what i'm doing I guess it's I guess it's not that bad of a, a gig as far as jobs go. That's it's no, really it's cool. Not. Um and yeah. it's cool that not only are you engaging your creative abilities, but now you're serving in a capacity to um bring your knowledge and what you've gained from your shop to a collective that could use that type of knowledge and that is going to uh, col- like you know collaborate to uh, pull everybody up that's involved and to be a sort of a beacon to others to be like wow I, maybe I could start DJing or maybe I could someday start life painting I mean many painters I've talked to they just one day decided this very similar story it's not like they started from childhood or from birth with a few exceptions but like most people just one day go oh I'm gonna do that and then they work on it and then it it takes a couple yep. of years maybe before you get somewhere where you feel like you have the confidence to actually put it out there. But what I've noticed about people's art is a lot of people, if they're really just creating what they themselves kind of uniquely know how to make and what speaks to them, whatever they're creating, even if it's like within the first couple months of them making art, there's something valuable about it to somebody somewhere. You can really just get right on the horse if you have sort of the motivation in the drive. For real, if you're creating from a place of, I think it's it's like the intent and then the place, like, are you creating from your heart or creating from your soul? Because if you're creating from there, you're creating from the same place that somebody's going to appreciate that piece of art. So it's not, it's not about the perfection because you're a human doing it. It's about the fact that you're creating it. And, and somebody who's in a place to appreciate, you know, the beauty or the creation or whatever it is, because it's all that same energy is going to see that, that you put into it. And I feel, I don't know, because I'm super picky and hard on my own work all the time. I'm my own hugest critic. And people will be like, what are you even talking about? I can't even see that even when you point it out. And it's they're like, it's, it's the energy behind it. You know? Yeah, when you're expressing your have... true self. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I say, people will say, you know, I don't necessarily have sorry, I dropped the phone. I don't necessarily have the skills or, or ability to do that, but I can almost see me through what you're doing, you know, and that's when I want to turn around and be like, no, you can do this too. You know, like one day I picked up a paintbrush and just started throwing paint on a canvas because it felt good. It wasn't what it would look like at first. You know, this is three years deep. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give up. That give goes for, goes for anything like podcasting. Even I, if you think podcasting sounds like a thing you would like to do, you can figure it out. There's like free programs and everything. You don't even have to spend money to make something like this. I mean, just um, whenever you find a thing that lets you express your own uh, perspective on truth, and now that's not to say that you're the arbiter of truth, but it's your way of describing what you observe as actually true, as opposed to, you know, um, 
well, trying right. to decide for yourself well, everyone, what's true. We're all pieces of the whole. So, I mean, everyone's truth is going to be different. And being able to see and understand everyone's piece of truth helps you, I don't know, see the whole picture. The way that I... You know, we're just one small perspective of this grand reality. The, a good metaphor that I've heard is that basically whenever we're put into this world... Um, it's like we came into a room where there was a 12 million piece jigsaw puzzle that got scattered all around the room and the lights are off and there's no power in the room. So you come in and you're mm-hmm. like, you have like just your, your phone flashlight and you're looking for these pieces and trying to put together the puzzle and figure out the picture of like, what is reality? What is life? Who am I? You know, what, what is expressing itself through consciousness and the vibratory frequency that we call consensus reality? And if you're lucky, you run into other people in the room because uh, you can see them by their light, having their light on. And you bring your pieces that you found and they bring their pieces they found to the table. And we all you try to put them together. Pieces. Yeah. And then maybe we can start putting them together and getting a bigger picture of what's actually up. But that's kind of what it is with like the perspectives on truth. It's not that we aren't seeing the same truth. It's just that truth is so infinite and uh, massive that it actually does require all of our perspectives to even get sort of a, a semblance of a picture of what, what is real. Yeah. Uh, so another cool thing I did this, I was gonna say another cool thing I did this summer through traveling was not only I'm like, I love being an artist because I don't know, I'm following what I do. It's not only am I transforming, you know, physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all through the same life process. It's not like I'm having to do different things to transform each of these different parts of myself. It's just all in one. I feel like I'm living what I'm supposed to be, but I'm transforming my art into something that I really enjoy. You know, I've always loved painting. And so I originally started with acrylics because that's just, you know, acrylic paint. It's the simplest paint to use. It's cheap. You know, you learn with it. And then I've slowly gone from acrylics to watercolors to liquid col- watercolors to now I'm using calligraphy inks and painting with those and really finding that the line work for my sacred geometry paintings that I do live are so much more simple with calligraphy ink. And I'm finding as I'm researching calligraphy inks and in art, you know, even spiritual art in a, like uh Chinese art or Japanese art, a lot of their art is very Eastern art is very spiritual based, you know, a lot of their symbols in there. And I'm realizing that in the past, my artwork, I'm creating a lot like these people create their, their artwork, they're using inks and pigments that you can get naturally, which I'm not making my inks naturally, you know, I go to an art store and get some really nice pigmented inks. But and so it's just cool to see how my spiritual growth and my path as an artist kind of reflects things that other people have done in the past, too yeah but at the um, same time i'm doing it all in my own unique way today that's something that is really important for people in terms of creative um making a creative effort is to look for always be like mindful and looking for new ways to make what it is that you want to make like if you don't feel satisfied with the way that you're working with acrylics for example there are so many other ways to put colors on a paper you know and then yeah there's also many ways to put your own energy into what you're doing beyond just the actual act of the painting itself like uh my friend mj lightning bug she's uh been on the podcast before and is a visionary painter and she does things like stretch her own canvas and uh, get her own like cut her own wood to put the canvases on and um you know, with you, maybe someday you might actually learn how to mix and create pigments and dyes for your calligraphy uh, ink out of natural stuff, maybe even local wild stuff for all we know. That's most likely something That'd that could be, be done. Cool. And then you're putting your own energy into other steps of the process. And so there's more of you in it. Right. More of your energy, more of your intention. Yeah. Kind of like when I make the... Uh, like skincare that I make that we talked about last time, you know, it's like mixing the things that you wash you know, your clothes with or your hair is just like giving that to other people too. You can put your intention in that and it can wash over them. 
Yeah, and that's very powerful. And I mean, I say I say it all the time. Lots of uh, lots of people talk about it, but even your intention programs the world around you, and especially things that contain water. So like pigments, uh, you know, skincare or what any kinds of medicinal ointments or creams that you might create. A, a lot of this stuff, pretty much everything, has some uh, water or hydration in it. And your intentional energy, even if you're not like holding your hand over the over the paint and going, oh, <laughs> you're still like, if you have a good yeah, thought no. about why you're doing it, that gets transmitted into it. You don't even have to like necessarily overly focus on it, but maybe when you do, it actually does get all that much more intensified in terms of carrying a particular yeah. signature. I was going to say, I definitely have that sort of sensation or belief about my art when I live paint because a lot of my artwork, you know, I paint at home in my studio and I do my art journals daily, but most of my works that I would sell, I do live because I want it to, I focus and kind of zone out on my canvas and just try to see what's there. And I listen to the music and I take in the energy of the crowd and the people around me. And I don't ever really have a set intention for what I'm going to paint until I, I get there. And then I, it forms through the energy of the show and the sound and the music. So I don't, you know, I don't sit there and go oh, over the painting, like you say, but I definitely like give all of my attention to that canvas and to the palette that I'm working with and really put myself into it. Well, yeah, putting yourself into it is, it doesn't require that you do something that other people do, like, like chant a certain word or phrase, all that stuff. Like it tends to create weird sort of hierarchies and spiritual thought to believe that another person is doing it right. And in reality, they might be doing what they're doing might be right for them. And it might be, sort of like, yeah. you know, right in terms of a, a natural or universal laws and principles sense as in they're not doing anything wrong. So therefore what they're doing is right. But definitely don't have to do any aspect of creativity or spirituality the way that others do. Um, yeah, just whatever it, feels not even right, whatever feels most sacred to you. <laughs> whatever yeah. feels like you're going to get that juju into that thing the strongest yeah. from you. Yeah, because whatever that's, that looks like. If, Belief is like the thing that's co making it concrete. So like if you, if you're copying another person's method and you're like, Oh, this is really like woo woo, stupid. Uh, I don't know. Um, of course it's <laughs> not going to really, it's not going to really manifest the intention the same way as if you're like, yeah, this is definitely the way to do it. If I say these magic words, then I will have a uh, perfect painting i don't know <laughs> i don't think that's probably going to work either no. but if you believe it who knows because like even our i've been learning a lot about um the interaction between the conscious and unconscious mind and the biological component of belief and they're like a lot of the smartest biologists that have been working in in uh, the sci scientific academia for decades are now really openly talking about the fact that even your gene expression is programmable through your own belief. So like within hours, you can turn on and turn off different genes even just by mentally focusing in the right way. So literally our mentality has ultimate hundred percent control over our physical manifestation. Cause if we can even alter the physiology of the, platform that our consciousness is running through then you know that's the interface through which we affect and interact with the world too so if our mind can change that thing then it can also therefore change the world and it kind of proves that mind creates matter not matter creates mind it's sort of i mean there's really no more question about it so uh the sooner we start doing things that we know and believe to be healthy for us and to our greatest good and to advance our own reasons for being alive in the first place, um, the better we'll feel, I guess. The, the more freedom we'll have, the less need we'll have to control all the little things and the better we'll be able to actually exist in the potentiality of chaos, which isn't really as scary as what people have in their minds. For for all intents and purposes in the world we live in right now, chaos isn't much 
I mean, there's definitely real negative chaos out there, but like for you, the, the chaos was just like, I'm on the road. Today is a little different than yesterday. I'm in a different place. I have to figure out a different way around, you know, like that's the unknown that most people are actually so terrified of. It's not like, um, the walking dead or something. <laughs> the real unknown is actually pretty simple and pretty manageable once you kind of get into the flow of it. And when something actually gnarly ever comes up, whether or not you're in a routine or you're out in the unknown, you're always equipped to deal with those situations and they don't come to you until you're ready for that lesson in the first place. So if you have that realization as well, then there's really nothing to be afraid of to just take the leap and start trying something different if you're not enjoying what it is that you're doing regularly. Yeah. See, for me, the, the physical realm is so much easier for me to grasp and be okay with. It's, it's the emotional realm of security and are we going to be okay? And am I going to be alone? And right. Do I matter? Does this matter? What I, am I, you know, does it matter if I even do what I'm doing or, <laughs> you know, the, the existential things? But that's just my own personal struggles. Well, Everyone has of, things that they're insecure with. Kind of matters about to the level that you decide that it matters, right? So if you get really stuck yeah. on the question of does it matter, well, then that's basically, that's there's your answer. <laughs> like, well, if you're questioning whether it, it's questionable if it matters, if you're questioning whether it matters, <laughs> as funny as that sounds. But like, really, any asking a question creates the answer as well. So... Um, if you can't find it within yourself to answer that what you're doing does matter to you, then all the more reason to start looking to change. And if you have a little bit of existential angst or unsureness about something, but then after some time and you recenter and rebalance yourself, you're like, no, I'm sure that this is my path. That's, that's different. You know, you can get a little, you can have, you can, you can have doubts yeah. about what you're doing without it meaning that I'm a you human. are failing. It's the ups and downs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, trust me, I know. I'm uh, a human. I mean, I haven't even got a podcast episode out for the longest like of all time since I've been uh, making it because of all the what the fuck stuff that has happened in my real life over the last couple of weeks. It's been like real questioning time. Not that... Not that a lot of the stuff that's happened has anything directly to do with my necessarily with my behavior or my routines, but it's just like things do occur that seem so not, you know, not sensical, nonsensical and unfair, I guess, is a way of putting it. Even sometimes you just witness these things happen to other people and it can affect you really deeply. And, um, you know, those those moments actually we're being called, I think, to, to not question ourselves and instead get out of that sort of loop of um, depression that can be injected whenever really heavy stuff happens out there and realize, well, if I maintain some semblance of neutrality and I focus on how can I be there for others instead of why I'm sad about this, uh, that can really transform yeah. things as well. because really the other people around you need you not that you shouldn't express your emotion or be sad if something sad happens, but that uh, you can't shut down and, and close off in those. Then you need you too. You can't like yeah. what you focus on is what you're going to dwell on. Like if you dwell in that negative low vibrational energy state, like you're almost giving yourself more of that. Cause it's just what you're holding in your head space. Like that's where, like when I get like that, I just try to clear my mind and just reset myself and go back to breathing, you know, just, retrain yourself you know is what kind of thought is this okay this thought's just going to make me more sad let's not think that one then what's going to make me happy and just like refocus yeah if i'm ever in you a, can't be the best you when you're focusing on just negativity remember your training <laughs> yeah or if you're if you're not you training it often so that when you get in those loops that you don't get stuck exactly and life happens in those moments where life is happening and you don't have the routine available because you're, you know, the, you don't have the practices of whatever it is you do, your meditation, your yoga, your centering practice, you, um, you can still kind of fall back on all the accumulated time you've spent doing it in a way. Time isn't exactly mm -hmm. linear, right? So all of the moments nope. combined that you are actually meditating in the past. So, and in the future, all coalesce in a way and, 
the more practice that you have, the more of an anchor it is in any moment outside of when you're actually doing it. Yeah. I started to realize that most of my problems in my world, you know, when you focus on the problems and you're like, this is happening because of this and you're trying to like go and root out the problem that's causing all your problems. I stop and realize like, if I just focus on me and not even like singular problems in me, just me as a whole, like as a battery, I want myself just completely built up and strong for every day, you know, physically. So I drink water mentally. So I breathe and meditate and emotionally. So I connect with other people who are like minded like me, you know, and the more you do that every day, you know, the more your battery is going to be charged every day. Kind of like you're saying, you know, that those times you've done it will be there for you when you're not doing it. <laughs> yeah. And what you're saying kind of makes me think you can't really combat maybe like bad behavior or negative habits or thought patterns in yourself. You can't sit there and just fight it. You can't go, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to quit doing this or I'm, I'm not going to think this anymore. It when you try to sort of fight it in that way, you have to it, make new ones. Exactly. You have to just do something else. Because I mean, the universe doesn't and understand does not, you know, it just hears the, the word you're saying, you know? Yeah. If you, if you go, I'm, I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. The universe doesn't hear. I'm not. It just hears hungry, 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 you know? So you have to be very particular and clear with your words to the universe because the universe is Universal, it doesn't have individual language, so it's already grasping out and hearing your individual language. Like, just make it easy on it. <laughs> yeah, and it makes it easier it's on easy the universe, on too, if you just let go and accept the fact that it's basically a dream And in terms of, like, the way that the universe responds to your thoughts and intentions. It's not that different than the way that in a, in your dreaming state you can just – create anything you think of it just happens at a different rate of time because we're in a slower density so if you have that real trust some aspects of the things that are just connected to you you can actually impact instantaneously an example i would give is i was driving back from kansas city last night a three-hour drive from 12 to 3 a.m and for me that's like i go to bed at 12 a lot or earlier, like 10. So, you know, that's like, potentially, I could be falling asleep at the wheel, feeling really tired. But at one point, I started to kind of feel that heaviness and fatigue. And I really believed, especially because I was listening to biologist Bruce Lipton in a podcast talking about the biology of belief and how you can change your cell expression. <laughs> but I just was like, okay, here's the smartest man in the world, really telling me straight up that my thoughts control my body a hundred percent and I can change anything about anything like to the point where I could walk on burning coals and not get even slightly singed if I really knew that I could and people do or the snake handlers in in um, in very intense church situations in uh, in the south have you heard of those like there's people that actually go into a religious ecstasy and they believe God will protect them and they handle handle like vipers and stuff and get bit and they yes. don't die or they drink strychnine poison and they don't die so like if people can do that stuff i can in this car sitting here go to myself um i'm going to be energetic and i'm going to feel completely awake and alert and i am not going to feel tired or drowsy and i said it and i gave myself a few re repeats of that phrase or that thought or that intention that belief and then i was just like great golden super energized it was one of the easiest drives ever and even time had a different effect where it felt like a lot shorter of a time spent driving in terms of the burden and difficulty of it um, and the friend I was with we had like a really expanded deep conversation so anyway to circle back to something you're kind of saying before it's not really about uh, stopping the negative thing or fighting the negative thing it's just about doing the positive thing um, and so in that sense, if you just put your intentions and thoughts towards raising your own vibration, mentally, physically, emotionally, um, and spiritually, then the other aspects like the behaviors that you want to change or the behaviors you want to start that are good, um, that will come about naturally as you match the frequency or the resonant vibration of those things by raising yourself up to it. 
in a way. I mean, not saying you don't have to act, but like the actions will come and flow more easily. I think if you're focusing on building well, yourself up things, if you're thinking about something, you're not going to do the opposite thing. Yeah. That's not human nature. <laughs> what you think about is what you do. <laughs> but, and then in that sense, what also you say reinforces it. Also the being stuck in thoughts too much keeps you out of, um, being where you are. So the great thing about having a practice like art is your brain kind of shuts off. That mental chatter can just shut off and you're just there. Mm -hmm. You're kind of flowing directly from your consciousness into physicality without kind of like almost bypassing the thought. And that also bypasses unconscious programmed behaviors that you don't even normally see in yourself. You're not going to do them. It's kind of like being The way Bruce Lipton, the biologist that I was listening to, the way he puts it is it's like being uh, in love, actually, because whenever you are in love, you're so present with um, the person that you're with because you actually want to be there and you want to see them and you want to experience them in the fullest that you don't get stuck in any unconscious programs because your unconscious never takes the wheel to drive. You're never on autopilot. So um, that sort of explains the whole honeymoon period that new couples yeah. get into where they they don't even act like their old Everything selves perfect. anymore they act like the perfect version of themselves yeah until the yeah. routines creep back in and the the you have to think too much again and when you're thinking really really hard about something that you're focused on like work or school or whatever um that's when you turn on autopilot with your behavior towards yeah, others Autopilot can be very dangerous. Being in a reactive state is very dangerous. I mean, there's good reasons Especially to have autopilot too. Like driving, it's really amazing how you can go on autopilot when you drive. You ever notice yeah. that? Like when you first start to drive, you like can barely turn the air conditioner on or roll the window down. And now I'm like polishing my nails and rolling joints. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? I'm so good at doing... Uh, extra things while I drive. It's it's kind of crazy to think about because it takes a lot of, I'm sure it takes a lot of mental processing power to be calculating all those variables, but you get in the car and you go, all right, I'm driving to Mike's house. And then the next thing you know, you're there and you, and you thought the whole way you were thinking about how you're going to, you were thinking, imagining this guitar riff that you were going to jam out with your friend. And um, you get there and you go, wow, I don't even remember a single thing about what I saw from from my house to here yet here I am. And I drove yeah. the car the whole way that that could freak you out if you weren't aware that, yeah, that's just how the yeah, unconscious just works. Kind of how your thoughts can take you out of the physical realm. You're so used to driving and it's like an extra appendage and it's like programmed into your brain where you're going that you're like there, like you said, and you're like, Oh man, I don't even remember how many lights are red or green. Like I'm, I stopped for all of them. So that's amazing. <laughs> What's real weird is though how much that happens just throughout the day, not driving, even like going from one room of the house to the other. You just like, we just wander around in in our thoughts and it's just sort of bouncing around doing program behavior. Oh, I'm going to do these dishes. Oh, I'm going to do this laundry. I'm going to do this or that around Mm -hmm. the house. And a lot of it is just, yeah, I mean, your unconscious mind has it programmed and knows what to do and you can be off in la la land. And, you know, to an extent that is not, I mean, it's good to have the freedom in your mind to just contemplate and imagine a lot, but there's also something to be said to being grounded and present at all times and all places because um, a lot of the thoughts we get stuck in are usually like worrying about the future or um, regretting the past, but especially when you're worrying about the future, when you're like, you have a mental argument with somebody or (laughs) you're trying to justify something in your mind to somebody in an imaginary conversation, you... Or you're trying to make something work in your mind as far as a plan that you have. <clears throat> and really, if you let go of all that stuff and we're just in the moment, when you got to the point where you needed to execute the plan that it was that you were spending so much time worrying and fretting about, you would be there, you would do what you needed to do when you needed to do it, and it would work out the way it was supposed to do. And, and it might not have any resemblance to the way that you were imagining it to work out because um, – whenever you try to just project in the future and create these specific little detailed plans for things, it's kind of asinine because there's so much assumption that goes in to that planning as far as how things are going to, how things are going to shake out of, of all the random variables in life. And you can waste a lot of energy in that, in that planning because when you get to the moment you have to flow and 
flow with it and do what the moment requires, not what the plan required, or you'll get totally stuck. Yeah. And if you put so much energy into that plan and it doesn't come out, then you get disappointed and you waste more energy, not only on planning, but on being disappointed after the plan doesn't work. So, yeah, so it's better to just, my strategy <laughs> for life is you just bumble well, through life with your head completely uh, in the plate, you know, head, head in the clouds, but feet on the ground. So you can, <laughs> where you, you're free to imagine and think what you will, but don't be overly fr- focused or worried about how things are going to turn out because you can bumble mm-hmm. and be lucky. You can literally train yourself to be lucky if you just don't care about, um, <laughs> I guess, like chaos or the unknown. You'll have a, and that's something that in the East Eastern Western traditions is a thing too. Like they have a whole different concept of luck than, than we do as well. Well, I kind of, it's, it's, you make your luck. Exactly. It's it's almost like kind of similar to like the concept of karma. Not, not exactly in any way, but just kind of like an analogous to it in the sense that, you know, the more things you do towards having good favor on you, then just like do good things, good things happen to you. What you put out into the universe comes back. And they do have different things in the Eastern religion, like things that will bring you luck, specific things, you know, like Jade or rabbit's foot. (laughs) Yeah. But that ties into that biology of belief as well, especially if it's a strongly held cultural belief. So many people believe that thing that over time beliefs come true. And so many people hold the same belief. And you know, Anyone really could recognize this, the truth in what we're describing here, yet a lot of people are completely closed off to even the concept of magic. But all magic really means is exercising your will to change your conscious experience. That's about it. Making a choice and, and yep. uh, sort of changing your belief on purpose. Programming the unconscious mind with the conscious mind is all that you're really doing with the phrase magic. Magic is just a really lame <clears throat> kid way of being like, I am consciously creating and ma- manipulating energy in a non-physical realm that will be manifested in my physical realm. Well, and but that's what we're doing all the time. We don't realize the Disneyfication of magic is like, Oh, I'm going to have lightning bolts shooting out of my fingertips so I can throw fireballs. That's what magic means. But <laughs> no, uh, um, although I guess technology is sort of magical in that way in that you could, create something that someone else didn't understand. But, you know, now who knows though? All right, who am I to limit what humans can do? I guess there's even like Qigong masters uh, that I've seen video footage even of like people setting a stack of newspapers on fire with the energy from their hand and stuff like that. So I guess the fireball yeah. thing is kind of possible, but it's not really magic in the woo woo unexplainable if- sense. Yeah, because maybe we just haven't focused on that type of a thing for long enough because we're so obsessed as human beings in the physical realm because we went through the Industrial Revolution and you know went towards the technology thing because you know a lot of people don't believe in magic or you know alchemy was squashed and pagans were squashed and we're all Western thinkers you know in in our world that we live on on this side of the world and so I mean imagine if you know in two thousand years this industrialized world is crumbled and then the, the magical realm is reigning and that's what they've focused on for thousands of years. And I mean, that would be tight. <laughs> well, yeah. I know. You come back and there's not schools of medicine. There's schools of energy manipulation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, what you say makes a lot more sense than keep continuing the Western paradigm into the future. Because uh, if you look at all of known human history, the magical perspective, I guess, I won't say the magical perspective. Let's just call it idealism because that's the ontological counter to materialism. Idealism being the, mm-hmm. you know, mind first, mind creates matter concept. And that was, and that's also the magical paradigm. And that was the prevailing paradigm of thought for common people all of all types and all places forever until that modern industrial revolution scientific materialism thing came around and you know don't get me wrong that thing has gotten us far i'm talking to you on a cell phone and i'm on a computer you're on a cell phone you know we're miles away it's being recorded we're going to post this to the internet like that scientific materialism is definitely amazing 
But what if it actually disconnects us? At the same time, from... imagine the amazing things yeah. that we could do if we focused on the spiritual realm or could, the energetic realm. Could we do this realm. exact thing through consciousness without the need for the external technology? If we had, I know. A what if we dimension? actually projected and programmed it into a crystal or something? I mean, for all we know, that's too... into the collective conscious that other people <laughs> could listen to while they were asleep. Yeah, people come like people go to bed and uh, they dream the conversation we're having, and that's how they tune in. You know, who knows? go dream in the universe realm tonight. See what Chance <laughs> is up to. Speaking of the external <laughs> technological version of the astral plane, I've said this before, but something I really want to do in the future is, you know, like three D painting, like the ZBrush thing and all that. Oh my gosh! Yes. Well, what you, combine that with virtual reality, and what if we could have like a virtual podcast studio where the audience and myself and the, and the guests, we all use this, uh, this virtual reality painting technology and create an actual world that we build from the ground up and collaborate on. And then that's where we go when we have podcast conversations and we can have like these digital avatars and like me and you will be in our awesome, that's some uh, straight super... black mirror stuff. Yeah. So, and then people <laughs> could tune in live and they could come to the virtual reality place that we built and they could like watch our conversation and we could see their avatars out there. Like it would be nuts. That's totally possible. There's actually a guy that does that kind of a thing already. Um, it's called like Gunther's universe or something like that. And uh, I've been meaning to check it out, but I never have, but I'm definitely wanting to take that idea. It's just sort of a, uh, complicated to get that launched <laughs> yeah it sounds complicated but i'm gonna commission you to paint a big section of the 3d world whenever i get the technology i'm about it <laughs> okay can uv sacred geometry up your 3d world man if it's a 3d world would the geometry be 4d i mean it's 4d in this world when you look at it and we're in the 3d world in a way yeah. So, I mean, like the energetically, the, uh, the information energetically in the symbol would be carried either way, whether you're looking at it on a virtual reality screen or, uh, you know, a wall, it's still or life. That's what's so amazing about sacred geometry is that these, these patterns and shapes that are in, you know, they appear to be flat and two dimensional. You can conceptualize the way that they would have, they would appear if they extended into a third dimension. You can see, you know, imagining the uh, flower of life with actual spheres as opposed to just two dimensional mm -hmm. circles. And actually that's, that idea is how DNA projects three dimensional shapes because DNA itself is actually a two dimensional code. When you break down molecules and look at the way that atoms are combining to each other and the angles and degrees that they're doing that in, it's all in sacred geometry. And that's why I paint what I do. <laughs> like, it's all connected back to psychedelics. And that's why I love psychedelics is opening you up to see that everything is connected and everything is everything. Like it's, we're all each other. <laughs> we're all different and the same at the same time because we're made of the same pieces, same shapes. Yep. Everybody's Marina. Technically. And everyone's just, chance. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of like, I don't know, are, are we like a fragmented mental patient of a super consciousness that has been somehow separated from understanding its true self? Or did we think this, or are we that, but we're not insane and actually we just wanted to have a fun game where we split ourselves up into a bunch of forms it's kind of like the question of are we trapped on earth or did we choose to come here you know i think that's or or is is the planet hell or is it heaven you know that's like, your choice it's your that's choice. your choice you create your reality exactly is the glass empty or full are you a drop in the ocean or are you the whole ocean in a drop um and as usual, it's pretty much always both. <laughs> exactly. Whatever that's you what you were saying questions. earlier. That's the problem. That's like the existential thing in life is like it's what you make it. Things are all, only have the meaning you give it. So beautiful. Yeah. Um, lib it's ultimate liberation once you realize that, that you're not, you don't even have to be committed to a, a meaning. 
even the meanings that you create and have attachment to, if they no longer serve you, see you later. <laughs> there are only a few things that are concrete, unshakable truths that we need to respect. And that's like the super simple stuff. Like, don't be a dick. Don't steal. Don't hurt each other. You know, like basically any form of harm to another person or, or fraud to another person or lie. If we just cut out those very simple things, you know, those like seven deadly sins, if you will, there's really no, no other reason that you should have to restrict your thoughts or behavior, your contemplation or your imagination. And to get ourselves, we actually need to get out of the world situation we're in super fast. And that's why I'm really gung ho about getting people to start engaging their imagination, because until we can imagine a way of living that's different than what we're doing now, we will never get there. And so we have to resurrect the imagination. It's, it's a very vital part. It's, it's training you for creating your reality. It's getting you to dream up the unimaginable. It's making you expand yourself in your reality. Yeah, a lot of people that have gone to the other side through near-death experiences often say that this is a classroom that we're in. And it is really. You're just you're here to learn. It is. To in, how to engage your creativity, how to engage your imagination, and also, more importantly, may, well, equally importantly, I guess, how to be responsible for your creations. Because it's not just the act of creation itself, it's then what comes next? What, what does your creation bring to the world? How does it, you know, how does it grow? How do you need to be there to manage it? And what can you learn from it after it's been pulled from you know, the depths of yourself. Just ask any parent, for example, when they create a child, do they teach the child or does the child teach them? A lot of them will say they learn, they think that they're learning more from the kid than they're teaching the kid. Yeah. And that goes for like even getting into painting or drawing or something, you will start learning stuff about yourself and about what's in your unconscious that comes out through that, that you did not know before. And in a way that's like, you're not, you take taking responsibility for your creativity becomes your greatest teacher. Exactly. That's so funny. That's true. It's like the ultimate creation. The student is actually the teacher. <laughs> yeah. So much though. It's because their perspective is so pure. I feel because then you see things, you know, through with your wisdom, but through their perspective, and then it's just like paradigm shift. Yeah, but you can also get you can get that from even the simplest creature. I mean, look at a dog. That's oh, unconditional yeah. love, and you can learn you can learn every day about it. Mm-hmm. At the same time, like with a cat, I just got a cat for the first time. I've never had a cat before. Her name's Pumpkin, and she's the best thing ever. And she's teaching me about putting me first because that cat does. <laughs> Put it, puts herself first. Cats know how to make themselves happy, and they don't care what anyone else thinks. Not yeah. in a bad way, just in a content to be a cat way. <laughs> That's really true. Um, uh, they they can even be. They can take it too far, though. I'll say. Well, they, everybody's <laughs> a brat at some point in their lives. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, it's part of the development because it does actually, I think it, it goes pretty, people who put others first to the point where they disregard their own needs, it doesn't, they don't end up doing a very good job for the other people. So you do have to do it in the sort of that huh. order of like, okay, you can't feed from an empty well. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. So that's what the cats are teaching us. And the dogs are teaching us to put the other people first. Yes. Cats so are teaching us to respect ourselves. Cats and dogs. That's so true. Just like we're mixtures <laughs> of the right and left brain, the masculine and the feminine, the cat and the dog. It, it's all about that Balance whole. Balance and everything, black and white. You're not one or the other. You're both. And you got to integrate. And <laughs> yeah. Okay, Marina, I want to ask you. And flow between them. Do you have anything coming up or anything you want to promote online or um, as we're getting I a little towards actually. the last end of the hour here? <laughs> the probably the last thing I would want to plug is uh, the next thing that I'd be traveling for, for sure. It is a, an event that is also uh, 
being sponsored by uh, That's Dope Records, and it is called Sacred Wellness Festival. It's going to be an indoor festival focused around uh, wholeness and wellness and uplifting music and uh, group meditation. I mean, you can tell by the name kind of what their their goal is with the event, but that's going to be in Peoria, Peoria, Illinois. And that's in February. I want to say like the first, first or second weekend. I'm really excited for it. Uh, I, I like indoor events in the winter, you know, at hotels. It's got a different vibe than a camping festival. Yeah. It's fun. So it'll feel, I think it's going to probably have more like a conference vibe. I feel like there's going to be a lot of learning, but still a lot of fun and a cool. lot of art. Uh, I want some info so, about that. I'm kind of interested in coming. Yeah, it's sacred wellness, and uh, you can go to sacredwellness.org and get lots of information about that. Uh, the Trifinity, they just dropped the headline for it, and the Trifinity is the headliners. So uh, Yeti, Toadface, Mount Analog, uh, as well as Dixon's Violin and, and a bunch of other great artists. So I'm oh, really yeah. excited. And they all are kind of conscious, forward-thinking artists. Very, so, not kind of. <laughs> They're very conscious. Oh, yeah. Dixon's a, yes, a they are. shaman wizard for sure. Um, yeah, I'm super pumped. I don't know if you can tell. I'm super pumped about this event, and I've been booked for this for a while. And uh, the other artists, they've got lots of live painters. I've got uh, Alex Buchanan, a fellow friend, Gavin Gonzo Art, and then Kayola Crayola. We're all going to be live painting. So there's going to be lots of creative expression of all kinds to hopefully yeah. inspire and encourage others. A whole gang of people that I want all on this podcast at some point. <laughs> Basically. So basically you should just come and then we can get you linked up with all those people and you'll have podcast material for a hot minute. Yeah. Which is good because I intend to make it forever. So yeah. Um, if you're out there listening yeah, exactly. and you want to talk to me, hit me up. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, um, yeah. I'll link to all that and to your Wanderwear shop and, um, you know, to yeah, Razzo. I've always I've got wanderwearshop.com. That's where I'm still plugging my blog and my creations. Um, my Etsy, I pretty much just have my hat pins and, uh, things like that, but my website. And then also I started a Facebook page for specifically my artworks that I'm live painting just to kind of keep that separate and not spam my wanderwear vending page, but that's Marina Carey art. Cool. Simple. <laughs> so I'll have a load of links on the episode notes and on the, uh, universe podcast.com site for you guys listening to check out all the things that Marina is into, like the many other creative individuals of history that are extremely talented. She is involved with a lot of different stuff. So make sure you check the notes and see from the music that she's uh, helping promote to her painting, to her, her various shops online with hat pins and crystals and metaphysical tools. And, you know, if you liked what we were talking about, you guys would like past conversations she and I have had too. And I'm definitely going to have you back on um, as soon as is appropriate because we really can't, you know, we, we talk about the same stuff in a way, but I can feel how both of us have sort of evolved in our um, perspectives since the last time we had a conversation like this. And it's really cool to see how a lot of what we've been learning is in sync with each other. Um, Despite, yeah, you know, it's not cool having to see talk. the collective conscious growing, you know, with and differently than each other, you know, together, alongside each other. It's cool. Since this it's all the same time. person. <laughs> we're all exactly. the one. We're all one person. <laughs> cool. Yes. Um, thanks a lot. Well, thank you so much, Chance. I'm, I was, yeah, exactly. Thank you so much. This is awesome. I, I can't wait for the future. Yeah, I look forward to a very amazing continued friendship marina um uh, these are some of my favorite conversations is when i get to talk to not just like a a guest that's really cool to bring people to but also a good friend so i hope i get to see in february or maybe sooner than that if uh there's some kind of show that we happen to both be at i actually kind of thought i might see it at grizz <laughs> last night since it's not that I was far outside from of grizz oh i was i was trying to find a way in but didn't quite <laughs> oh man well it was pretty cool uh, i know i'm working on getting i'm i made the responsible adult decision and i did not spend the money on the ticket because i'm trying to like with that intention i'm trying to get a car so that next year festival season i've got a good festy car because i've been dealing with junkers for a while so i finally made you know no i'm gonna put all my efforts towards doing this thing that i want to do because i know it's going to be better in the long run for my career and for myself so yeah and well, i've seen grizz and i got to hear grizz i stood right next to the door <laughs> yeah you can definitely hear it <laughs> outside 
Cool. Um, well, yeah, funny. I didn't run into you. I kind of just jumped in the car and, and bailed right away because I had a long drive. But Oh, I don't blame you. That's a long drive. Get home safe, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Well, we'll wrap it up. That's uh, I've hit the mark. So, uh, you know, better let you get back to your life so you can keep manifesting those dreams and intentions. And uh, like I said, everybody, <laughs> Thanks, check out man. all the links for what Marina's up to. And um, wow, <laughs> much love. This has been great. And thank you for uh, getting me back in my podcasting rhythm after kind of a what the fuck couple of weeks. This was just what I needed to re- really refresh my my uh, my direction, if you will. So it's awesome. I'll put this Same, out dude. soon. Okay. Um, love so- you, man. Much love to you and your family. All right. Talk to you later. Let's do it. 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 Yeah. Oh, it's like that. What? My whole crew comes in like that. Yeah. Oh, it's like that. What? My whole crew comes in like that. Yeah. Oh, it's like that. What? My whole crew comes in like that. Yeah. Oh, it's like that. What? My whole crew comes in like that. Oh, it's like that. What? My whole crew comes in like that. Yeah. Oh, it's like that. My whole crew comes in like that. Oh, it's like that. Huh. Oh, like that.